in an internal combustion engine. Optimizing the airflow in and out of each combustion chamber is an important aspect of performance. The power, the emissions, fuel economy, and other critical parameters all depend on how good the engine flows in and out of the air in the cylinders. Let's take a look at what we're doing here. We're going to bring cold intake air in and mix it with air-fuel mixture so we can have good combustion. Once combustion is completed, we're going to exhaust the gases. So we have to pump the gases out and pull them in. We've got to inhale and exhale, to put it in human terms. And both are important attributes. And we can control both of these and the timing of each event to change things. We call this cam phasing. Cam phasing is changing the phase angle of the cam. It's going to be changing in discrete steps in phase one. And don't confuse phasing to phase one. Phasing is an indication of how we're controlling it. We're changing the phase angle. Phase one is just the starting point in variable valve timing. It started back in the early 90s. Let's take a look at our speedometer in the center and our valve timing. We're going to be variable and changing positions of the cam, phase angles, with operating conditions. In the center is our speedometer. We're doing about 20 miles an hour, and if we're going to take a look at our intake, which we're going to change in this particular example, we have normal position. As we bring the speed up to mid-range, in the second frame of this, we see the intake is advanced this opening, where it opens sooner. Then if we go on down and look at that bottom one, we've even advanced it slightly more, and we get to the higher speeds. So what's happening in this particular example is we're advancing the intake valve with increasing speeds. Now, this is a very simplified example. We're going to get into the details of all of them because we're going to have to understand it. But VVT has been around for a while, so don't think that this is something brand new. But it all is going to have to do with the intake and the timing of the combustion engine and the timing of compression. Believe it or not, we have some variations. We're going to change the compression slightly. And then we're going to have combustion and power, which is results of getting air in. And then we have to have the scavenge or get the exhaust out. If we can't get the exhaust out, we can't get more air in. So we're going to be looking at the top end of this cycle. We're not going to worry about the bottom end. We're going to worry about the four stroke at the top. Intake, compression, ignition, and exhaust. Now we have three signals, uh, main things we're going to look at. The Otto cycle, the Atkinson cycle, and the Miller cycle. Later we'll discuss the HCCI, which is going to be taking a lot of things into account. The auto cycle is the four-cycle internal combustion engine we all know so well. The Atkinson cycle, a crankshaft with an offset cam control. It has got a specific design and we'll go through it. The Miller design, or the Miller cycle, is based on the valve timing and is frequently has a supercharger. Let's talk about the Miller Atkinson because it shows you just what can be done with valve timing as a good example. Highly efficient but overall power is decreased. It allows intake, compression, power, and exhaust to occur in two camshaft rotations. But five things are going to happen during these four strokes. The intake valve is going to be held open longer than normal to allow reverse flow back into the intake manifold. This is done on the first part of the compression stroke, where it's just starting to come up. We're going to send about 20% of the mixture back into the intake. This lowers manifold vacuum and will increase our efficiency. But this reduces the efficiency and the effective compression ratio by reducing combustion chamber volume. What we've done is basically lower the volume. Works very well with turbochargers and superchargers. It has a lower compression ratio. We have a two-mode hybrid that uses this. We have a big reason on a hybrid is the hybrid vehicle has two different propulsion options. It has an internal combustion engine and an electric motor. The ICE needs to be efficient at mid-range only. That's where it has to run by itself and doesn't have much contribution from the electric motor. The ICE relinquishes low-end and high-end power and torque to be efficient at mid-range. Now, in truth, because we have variable valve timing, this isn't really quite that drastic. By using variable valve timing, we don't have to do that. But the electric motor assists on acceleration and high power demands. So we don't need all the power and performance out of a Miller engine we'd need out of a standard engine. 
Let's talk about the five events and not just four cycles. We're all familiar with the four cycles. We just went through intake, compression, power, and exhaust. Well, the Miller Atkinson is going to break it down into five. Intake, backflow into the exhaust, intake manifold, then compression, then power and exhaust. Let's show you why we're going to be doing that. It features a longer power stroke than compression stroke. By keeping the intake valve open longer, this is a, a normal operation. Although some of the fuel is pushed back through the intake, overall economy is increased because we have reduced the, ver the, the volume of the cylinder. This reduces the CO2 contribution because we're burning less fuel. With variable valve timing, we can make this happen without punishing low-end and high-end performances badly. The camshaft bore is offset 12 millimeter. It lowers the combustion side forces for power stroke, which reduces engine friction. In these hybrid engines, they've done a lot of things to improve efficiency. Now, this is the true Atkinson. It uses a lever and a cam on the side with an offset in controlling the intake valve. We could go through all this. It's not very practical to talk about it since we don't see them much anymore. But let's talk about the what's happening here. It completes a four cycles with the use of a lever on the side to offset the opening or timing of the intake valve. Today's hybrids accomplish the same thing, variable valve timing. This is why we refer to this as the Atkinson Miller cycle. Miller, Miller is an American engineer that just took the Atkinson and said, I don't have to do this with complicated levers. I can do it with variable valve timing. And this is a prime example of variable valve timing. So now that we've had our introduction, let's sit down and talk about all the attributes of a cam that can be used to control valve timing, valve lift, and all the technical information we have to cover to understand what's the advantages of doing all these changes. This one example, the Miller showed us we could make an Atkinson engine by using variable valve timing and keep life simpler. There are other reasons for doing this as well.